Torah Foundation versus Yeshua Foundation? A few days ago, I saw a very rigorous debate on social media. And what was stated was that born-again believers should not have a Torah foundation. Instead, the only foundation they should have is a foundation in Christ. And there were some biblical passages invoked to stress this. No Torah foundation, only a Christ foundation. I don't think any of us can deny the significant words of 1 Corinthians 3.11. For no man can lay a foundation other than the one which is laid, which is Jesus Christ, Yeshua the Messiah, New American Standard. There should be no denying how Yeshua the Messiah, Jesus Christ, is to be the foundation of our salvation. Everything we do is to be centered around the work of the Messiah. And indeed, I get very upset when I see different teachers, different leaders. It doesn't matter where they are. They can be in evangelicalism. They can be in liberal Christianity. They can be in the Messianic Jewish movement, independent Messianic movement, any of the offshoots from that point onward. I get very upset when it is crystal clear that the work of the Messiah on the tree and being sacrificed for human transgressions and his resurrection from the dead, him reigning at the right hand of the Father in heaven, is very clearly not the foundation of their salvation. It's not the core of who they are. It's not the centerpiece of their identity as human beings. And moving forward, I suspect that as things get more and more complicated in the world of religious ideas, we're going to be able to sort through those who are mature believers who place the work of the Messiah as central and those who are not so mature because something else has taken that place. We can't disagree with the fact that the work of Yeshua, who he is, is to be the, self, the foundation of our salvation and our faith is to be built on his completed work. Yet, what about our theology, doctrine, our practice? Consider what the Lord himself says in Luke 24, 44, and this is immediately following his resurrection. This is on the road to Emmaus. Now he said to them, these are my words which I spoke to you while I was still with you, that all the things which are written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. And verse 45, then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. New American Standard. Here, the resurrected Yeshua, in speaking to various disciples who, at the time, could not recognize who he was, the resurrected Yeshua explained to them who he was from the Torah, the prophets, the Psalms. He was reminding them of specific teachings. He was reminding them of specific concepts and ideas rooted within the Tanakh, the Old Testament. It's clear enough that the Torah, the five books of Moses, the Pentateuch, is indeed to be the foundation of all Bible believers' theology. That's where the Bible begins. 
the Torah is hardly the end of the Bible. Indeed, the law, the prophets, the writings, the gospels, the apostolic letters, the book of Revelation, these are all integral parts of the Holy Scriptures. But how many people don't have a Torah foundation in terms of their theology? The foundation of their theology, doctrine, practice begins somewhere else. I remember back in the year 2008 when I was taking Old Testament theology at Asbury Theological Seminary, being challenged by a number of statements appearing in this book, uh, Old Testament Theology, Israel's Gospel by John Golden Gay, and he is a left-of-center evangelical. He had this to say in some of the opening paragraphs of his book here. One of the New Testament's own convictions is that the Old Testament is part of the scriptures. Indeed, is the scriptures. The New Testament is then a series of Christian and ecclesial footnotes to the Old Testament, and one cannot produce a theology out of footnotes. That is a very challenging statement from a Christian theologian, even one who is a left-of-center evangelical. He basically says that, look, the Bible is what many people label to be the Old Testament. What we label to be the New Testament treats the Old Testament as the scriptures. And what we consider the New Testament is effectively a collection of footnotes and appendix, if you like, to the Bible. I've even mentioned this to some Messianic people, and they've taken offense at it. They're like, I can't regard the apostolic writings, what we commonly label the New Testament, to be just an appendix onto the Tanakh or the Old Testament. But the statement makes an important point, and that is, what we commonly regard as the New Testament treats the Tanakh, what we commonly label as the Old Testament, to be the scriptures, to be the Bible. And indeed, in the coming days, with new controversies, with new discussions, we have to be able to understand the Bible, the scriptures of Yeshua and the apostles, and how it formulated their worldview, and how it directed their mission and their teachings and their value system. There are a lot of people I have encountered in my time in ministry, unless an Old Testament passage is specifically quoted in the New Testament, then we're really not to take it into that much importance. We're not supposed to really consider it that significant. I believe that is a huge mistake. How many things can just be pulled out of the Tanakh or the Old Testament by a New Testament writer saying, in the scriptures or in the law or in the prophets, something like that? That can be controversial for some people, yet I think that the point is made the Tanakh, the Old Testament, what Golden Gay himself likes to label as the First Testament. I have here his uh, specialty uh, translation, specialty edition of the uh, Tanakh, what he calls the First Testament. That's the Bible of Yeshua and the Apostles. And we have to begin to understand that in order to better understand the apostolic writings, what Golden Gay might call the Second Testament. Torah foundation versus Yeshua foundation. I think it's fair enough to recognize how we can approach foundation from a number of different perspectives. There's a foundation to our salvation, our growth in faith. 
That is to be the completed work of Yeshua, his sacrifice for us. But in terms of our theology, the, the foundation of our theology is, yes, the Torah, the Law of Moses, the Pentateuch. But while you can't have a house without a foundation, it's also true enough. You can't have a house with only a foundation. You have to also take into consideration from the mouth of the Messiah himself, Luke 24, 44, the prophets, the Psalms, meaning the writings, and of course, we would also regard the Gospels, the Apostolic Letters, Revelation. Torah foundation versus Yeshua foundation is a false dichotomy. Torah foundation concerns theology. Yeshua foundation concerns one's salvation.